Lemons Homebrew coming at ya today with another beer review course and today is May 26th and today I have Lord de Boom from 21st Amendment this was one I actually bought before the 30 day sobriety challenge so it's you know unfortunately it's a little dated it's uh, it was canned on February 5th of 2013 so you know we're talking about, you know, three and a half months. But hey, you know, <laughs> I, got, I got to try it. It's a barley wine, an American barley wine. So it should be much more hoppy. And the IBUs are kind of proving that out. It's rated at 92 IBUs. It's 11.5% ABV. And uh, this one by 21st Amendment, they actually, the nice thing is they actually tell some of the ingredients here. So they use pale malts, Vienna malts. Munich malts, uh, the bittered black. They also put in Belgian candy sugar in that. Uh, for bittering, they use uh, Warrior, and for flavor, they use um, Amarillo and Cascade. So, some some nice stuff there. Interesting that a bittered black. I mean, you know, that that's kind of interesting on a barley one, I thought. But uh, we're gonna get this one snapped open, popped open. I'm not, I'm so not used to doing the cans, and this is such an Odd, interesting little guy here. Get all that goodness we can. These cans are just 8.4 fluid ounces, so yeah, they're cute. Makes them a little pricey. It's a nice looking beer. You know, they describe it themselves as being chestnut brown, and you know, I would say that's pretty accurate. I've done some staining of woods, and I can have a picture of chestnut brown. Makes me think of a nice maple syrup color, almost something like that. Some just a little bit of copper, almost copper hues when I put it up to light, I'd say. Um, but yeah, it's a lighter, lighter brown. Just a ring around the rim. We're really not going to get a lot in terms of head, and that's no surprise. But it looks like it might leave some lacing, though, which is kind of neat. Let's get a nose on the Lord of Boom. Wow, oh. Wow, there's some nice, sweet uh, caramel flavors coming off of that. And a lot of fruit. I, I'm getting like some dried fruits in and like, uh, like almost like caramel apple, you know, candied apple off that. Okay, I'm sure that's coming from the hops. I got uh, actually, surprisingly, I mean, it's not that fresh, almost like a little bit of grapefruit as well. Like almost a hint of orange. I'm, I'm just almost shocked, really. Yeah, it's interesting. It's very malty, I would say. And, and you're getting, um, though you're still getting some things like uh, uh, some uh, raisin on that, but it's almost like a syrupy scent coming off of it. Kind of a, a light toffee aroma. Almost got like a really ripe pineapple scent off that. Very, very unusual, very different, fun. It's almost like a, like toasty, there's a little breadiness and almost like buttery. Um, and rather than sh maybe syrup, maybe it's more like buttery. I don't know, it's uh, quite interesting. Let's get a taste on this one. You know, the first thing I'm going to say is there's a, a little bit of nice effervescence. There, there is some carbonation on this. And that's kind of cool right now. I'll have to let this warm and see where it goes. But it actually was a really refreshing taste. Well, of course, I've been working on the R again. So, you know, probably <laughs> I was ready for something to sip. There's no missing the alcohol. It is... It is definitely there. It kicks you at the end, just like the bitterness. And, and you do get this bitterness. Um, because it's been three and a half months, it's part of it's leaning towards a, a bit of an earthy flavor. But it still has a bit of a bitter bite at the end, which is interesting. Uh, at the beginning, that's all very balanced out because you've got these caramel flavors coming through. And these like kind of toasty... Uh, flavors coming in like toasted bread that mixed along with some fruity flavors the flavors are quite strong actually but 
not real distinct, um, I would say. Um, that bitterness at the end, there's like just some off flavor to me. Um, and some of these flavors just don't feel like they play really well together. I think what I'm going to need to do is let this warm up a little bit and kind of see where it goes, see where, where it takes it. Um, because I probably poured it a little cool. We'll come back and then we'll wrap up and give some numbers. All right, I'm back with Lord the Boom from 21st Amendment. I am so glad I've taken my time with this. Um, well, this is one you really needed to get fresh. So I, I really regret that um, uh, I wasn't able to try it when I first purchased it. Eh, you know, what can I say? Did the 30 day challenge. Eh, mildly glad I did. <laughs> but um, those hop characteristics would have been so much more bright and full had I have done that. I'm not sure if this is one I want, I want to say would be great to age. You know, I like the idea of aging barley wines for sure. And I have some aging. But um, wouldn't be one I would buy at this point in time unless I was going to age it. Wouldn't be trying to drink it right now. Taking my time, it warmed up. Got some nice, more of that really nice caramel characteristics coming off of it. Again, I want to say a lot of fruit. I know I've heard people say a lot of other things as far as what, what things they've got on it. I'd read reviews on this before I picked it up. Um, there's certainly some raisin coming off that. I still get a little bit of apple coming off that, which is quite interesting, I think. Um, I know there's some citrus in there. Probably was really wonderful citrus coming off it when it was fresh. Um, it's an enjoyable barley wine. I would consider this a medium body. It has a, a creamy texture to it, actually. You know, and, it, and the carbonation, it's, it's a mod, you know, moderate, more like carbonation, but more carbonated than many barley wines, which at the moment is really refreshing, very nice. Um, there is a bit of alcohol in it. Don't kid yourself. I mean, this is an 11.5% ABV beer. Um, I do really like the, the, the toasted bread aspect. That part's really nice on the beer. Uh, I'm going to give this one an 86, I think. I'm going to just keep it within that very good category. I think it deserves that. Had I had it fresh, I might have rated it much higher. That puts it at the probably a B, a B bear, but very good for barley wine. And for my rating, I think I'm going to stick it right about the same place. I'm going to go right at that 86, just level playing field. It's a nice beer. Had I had it fresh, I'd probably love it. As it is, it's a very drinkable beer. I got to say... There's a great, a fantastic backstory on Lower the Boom. Go to their website. Go to 21st Amendment. Read the backstory on it. I, I love uh, stories from the Gold Rush period, and that's as much of a teaser I'm going to give you uh, of where this supposedly came from. Uh, so go check it out. This is the first time that they've uh, canned it. They put it in these cute little, what, I think 8.4 ounce cans. Um, hopefully they're not too expensive wherever you're at. But um, actually, really nice size. Probably, uh, probably something in some ways maybe we should see more of. I, it seems like I'm always getting these big, big beers in the 22-ounce bottles. Definitely something I should probably be sharing. I always have to stretch them out over the evening so my wife doesn't have to deal with me all night. <laughs> but um, this is it, Lord of Boom. Clement's Home Brew. Just saying, life's too short to drink cheap beers. And I will see you in the next beer review.